Ugh, this rock is so flat. I got nothing to get my... Ah! I'm Zachary Fowler and you're watching 87 Days, the complete reenactment of all I did out on a History's Alone show, but as if I did it here in Maine with the resources you find here, how I do things differently, and uh, how I'm preparing for All-Stars and doing it next time, should I have to defend my title of 87 Days. And today, we're what, this is episode 16, and we are gonna build, um, hopefully get a little bit of shelter done, and we're gonna work on the figure four trap. So out there in Patagonia, I wasn't able to use a figure four trap because of the, 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 the mice there had hantavirus. But to get on the show at boot camp, I had to make two traps to kind of prove our capabilities to the survival experts that would recommend us. And I made a figure four trap from an old book that uh, you can see in my sketchbook here. And when I made it out uh, for the example thing at the boot camp, I actually modified it, made it different, and that became the way I still make it to this day. It is, I think, the most lethal trap and the most efficient trap that you could ever make for survival when it comes to, to trapping and catching yourself some food outside of uh, fishing. Um, it, all you need is a pocket knife and you can make the most efficient trap ever. The figure four, original state of the figure four, I think is extremely inefficient, doesn't work well, can't handle half the load that this can, and the Paiute deadfall is painful to your fingers. It's, it's a miserable trap, and it, it works well, but it's, it's a pain in the neck. And unless you're very practiced at it, it's just, it's a waste of your time. And so the figure four that we're gonna make today, I'm gonna make the little Paiute uh, deadfall and the original figure four. I'm gonna see which one works better and I'll show you uh, why I think mine is the most efficient one. I started calling it the upside down figure four because of the way the sticks drop away and there's nothing in the way as the uh, rock comes down or minimal stuff in the way as the rock comes down to uh, catch your dinner. So, let's talk in. More making. Not bad for today. Managed to harvest quite a few of them in a very, very short time. The uh, shovel works pretty good for that. I tried a machete out at first and stuff, but um, shovels, shovel for the win, always the shovel for the win. So I'm gonna bring these up to the shelter. I probably got, uh, oh, I don't know, maybe a, a tenth of what I'm gonna need to do the whole outer walls when it's all said and done. But uh, for this episode, that's about as far as I'm gonna get on it this time. I'm gonna make some traps, let's make some traps. I don't know, now that I got it bundled up, it looks like I've, maybe I got a 20th of what I need to do the whole shelter. It's gonna take a little while but it'll be so warm and solid when it's done. Oop. Got some victims. Let's make some traps. Thought I'd set up here and do this because uh, whenever you're making these little small deadfall traps, you want rocks. You want a rock for it to fall on, but what a lot of people miss is 
you want a rock for it to be underneath it as well because a rock just falling on soft ground tends not to work unless your rock that's on top is super heavy. And if it does fall on soft ground, it might mean you get bugs and stuff eating before you uh, get back to your creature that you're trying to harvest for your food. So I stopped here and I saw this the other day. I said, wow, that one's a heavy one. There's a perfect, ah, oh, here we go. Here is a perfect, ah, oh, perfect rock to go on to another rock and do some squishing. Look at that. Yeah, that'll do the job. Perfect rock. So there's a certain balance between your, the size of your rock and the size of your, um, your trap and everything because if it's too heavy and you put it on the trap, the, the trigger, the figure four and things like that, it's gonna take a lot more pressure to release it and to set it off. And something small might come along, eat everything out of it. So you, you just gotta practice and play around with it and use the lightest probably size rock as a, um, or deadfall weight, whether it be a log or a rock, as you can for the item that you're trying to, for the game that you're trying to catch. All right, so I collected up some sticks, and uh, the sticks are an important part of your trap. I don't like to use green stuff. I want to always, if it's possible, find nice hard wood. I think this is like maple sticks right here. I snap it to hear that good hard snap to it, just like when you're trying to find good firewood. You want to hear that good hard snap to it. It's not soft. I want something sturdy. You break it, you can see it. It breaks with a lot longer grain pieces. So it's ready to go. You know it's good and dry. You want your wood to be dry for making traps because green wood is soft. So when you carve something to a point or to a wedge shape to fit against another one, that, that contact point is soft, whereas dry wood is hard. And those points will meet up well and they're easier to carve and shape and they'll come apart well, whereas green wood can be kind of get stuck to itself and, and the trap ends up not going off. You have to make the tolerances higher and it's not as sensitive and you, you want good dry wood. There we go. That's the uh, traditional figure four. There we go, there's another one done. And that's the one I like the best. Let's make the Paiute deadfall and then we'll test each one of them out. So you don't really need a multi-tool to make these, but it, cutting the joints just seems to go a lot quicker. With a good sharp knife, you know, you can cut in at an angle and then step it back and, uh, and you're good to go. But the saw is nice just to be able to cut your little pieces of length and uh, should you, you know, want to make multiple things like sit there, you can make all of your, your bait sticks the same length and you sit there and you make them all the same length and then when you cut your notches, you line them all up, you know, you got a, a measuring stick and you like cut a start of your notch here and the start of your notch there and you could just like make 10 traps exactly the same and go out and set them. So in the evening or a day when you're bored or it's raining and you're laid up a little bit, you sit there and you make 10 exact same traps that each piece would work with each and every trap. And, uh, and, and then you go out and you just, you just set them. And you have a little trap run. And the straighter your sticks are, when you're making these things too, man, the, the bigger a difference it's going to make when you're having to wrestle with setting them too. That was one of the most beautiful things about Patagonia, was the, uh, you know, the, the bamboo. The bamboo was just so perfectly straight and because of its level of hardness, I could make the whole thing green and it didn't seem to be a difficulty in, as far as making the traps work. 
For the Paiute deadfall, I'm gonna use some uh, bank line that I brought with me. Bank line is uh, just the most beautiful stuff that you could work with. This is a very fine stuff. Um, paracord comes undone. Bank line has a coating to it so that when you tie a knot, it stays there. Uh, it doesn't make them come apart the most easy way, but they, uh, when you make a knot, it's there and you don't have to fight it and come back and retie it. doesn't untie itself. It is probably the most go-to bushcrafters string out there, I bet. So, next thing we need here too is for this, um, the Paiute deadfall is a toggle. So if you see my two videos back, you saw the, the pumpkin on the spikes and I used a toggle there as well. Toggles are just the, one of the coolest things I think about making traps. There's traps that require toggles, you know. Something about them, just, they're so unique the way a toggle comes around, something melts, pins it in place, and then when it's tripped off, that flies free. But, I think on this, whoop, on this trap, I think this is the, the reason why this trap is not nearly as viable. Just too many fiddly, piddly putts pieces. ready. Let's try these puppies out. All right, first I'm gonna go with the most miserable one to set, the Paiute deadfall. Might as well get my fingers pinched early on, right? Picking a good rock that doesn't uh, rock back and forth too while you're trying to set your trap is uh, makes a world of difference too. Something that's stable when you roll it up like this so it doesn't slide one way or the other. The better you can get that figured out at the beginning, the better the whole process is. It might actually be worth it. It's not as heavy at this end, but it is still pretty heavy. But see, there we go. Nice and stable. It doesn't want to just, it doesn't want to slide one way or the other. It hinges nice and easily. That's the, uh, the ultimate right there. Here, mark my stick to length. This is another reason why you got to have you got to have um, hard dead stuff because if this is green, the smaller the stick you're using, especially with a pile deadfall, it's just going to go wow. Even if it doesn't do it right away, it might come back and it's collapsed because of that. It needs to be stiff. St oh, wow. <sighs> Ugh, this rock is so flat. I got nothing to get my... Ah! Wow! That... Ah! 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 That's what I did not want to do. What a miserable trap. Oh! So this trap is miserable to set, but I screwed up a little bit here doing it from memory. The toggle doesn't belong on that side of the stick. It's supposed to wrap with its string around the stick and be braced on the back side, creating a more stable platform for the bait stick to push against. Ah! Hmm. All right, we'll come back to that. Let's move on to the traditional figure four instead of the finger pincher. Uh, you got, the thing that makes a traditional figure four what it is, is this Lincoln log joint here in the middle. Obviously they're called a figure four because it meets together in the shape of a figure four. But right here you got your bait, it goes on this end and this will go underneath the rock right in this position right here in the front. And this, these two sticks 
have this notch that fits together. And that notch is what uh, holds the whole thing together. And when something knocks away at this, this pops out. And traditionally, these, if you see them in drawings, these sticks are all three of these sticks are the same diameter, which means that that's like three quarters of an inch. When that rock falls, if your two rocks that you have found, you know, aren't perfectly fat in the way they meet together, and this bait stick ends up underneath of there, and it ends up in just the right spot as your bait stick, that's enough that right there, that's three quarters of an inch, and if it ended up on a lumpy spot, that mouse or something that you were gonna have for dinner, you know, is gone. Nothing like the uh, miserable Paiute deadfall. It's like, boom, done. One and done. And now my bait stick, you can see it's like way up here. It's not in the best position. I mean, you can either I could, have saw, I could saw this thing shorter or I can move it to whatever position I want and it always, it kind of takes it, it takes it really well. The trap it doesn't mind being put at an angle now it's down low enough that a small mouse a chipmunk squirrel put some acorns right in and around here i could even pin my bait underneath the stick so that it's like they have to like when they pull it out it knocks this whole thing apart all right so a little squirrel comes hopping along and uh let's see sees an acorn like oh look at that an acorn totally want it here I go. And it didn't go off. All right, so that's exactly what I was talking about with the figure four. The, uh, it just went and bashed the end of the stick and it didn't go off. The traditional figure four and that Lincoln log attachment, um, it, it's just not, it's just not set up for success 100% of the time. Um, granted an animal is going to come along and worry at something, but if that was the acorn that was just pinned underneath there, he snagged it away, the stick moved, everything happened, and it's, he's gone free. So, let's try again. Again, he goes by. Okay, another squirrel. Another one goes by. Everybody's getting away with the bait. Again, the thing moves all over the place. Now, I've seen somebody before when they set it, they take in there, while they're setting it, they pull the joints apart after the, just a little bit till they're just hair triggery. And so let's try that a little bit. See, it's like, it, it's like, right there it falls apart. Ah, see? Ah. There. See, it, it's just obnoxious. Not, not what you want to deal with. You want something, you fix it, you forget it, you know it's going to work 100% of the time. All right, you know what? I want to show you what a good trap works like. The difference between the traditional figure four and this one is right here. The back end fits together the same way. The front, the top end fits together the same way. What's different and why I call it upside down is there is a joint right here. And you see that joint? This stick can fall away without any effort right there. It's locked into there like this, but only thing holding it in place is back, is the this being pulled backwards on it right here, this notch here. So when it comes apart, these two notches, and this stick can be so fine, just as long as you can get enough of a notch in there that it locks into this. All right, this one is so easy to set up. It is the simplest of traps to set up. Pick it up, hold your two pieces. They're set outside of the trap, so when they go off, they fly free. You got your bait stick, and you just put it in place, and she's good to go. All right, squirrel comes along. He's gonna steal something from the end of our bait stick. And squish. Got ourselves a... Uh, got ourselves something for dinner. Pumpkin. Let's uh, give that Paiute deadfall one more chance. Oh, 
I did it. <laughs> oh my goodness, what a pain in the neck. Holy cow. And now that I got it set, it's like, uh, that's not even a good spot. Like you want that to be pinning your bait up underneath of your, your trap here. I, I had a hard enough time finagling the toggle, the uh, bait stick, and the whole thing all together, much less, I mean, how am I supposed to pin a, uh, I mean, I guess the easiest way would have been split the stick and put something that stuck in the split so that it didn't depend on the the thing uh, or, or tying something onto the stick so the stick has to get worried for this thing to come apart. Here's our rabbit, our squirrel, chipmunk, something like that, bird comes wandering along. You got some seeds or something underneath there. You noticed your animal's been eating and he goes to worry at the, worry at the bait stick and get that uh, food that you either have tied on there or wedged against between the rock and the stick and boom. That is a beautiful trap the way it works. It's just so fast and so smooth and it's just such a, uh, I mean, that, that did it. That, that did it. That would have been, that's a dinner provider. But it's such a hard set, the Paiute deadfall. I think, you know, my whatever I call it, the upside down deadfall, it's the way to win. And uh, that's what I'll be using in the future. Toggles, though, make the most beautiful traps as far as I'm concerned. I think they're the you know, most unique part of a good trap is one with a toggle on it. So, see you next time. Thanks for watching. Fowler out.